Hi everyone. So we are here again to discuss yet another case in the series of case discussion in urogynecology. I'm Dr. Deeksha Pandey in charge of the subdivision of urogynecology in our department and I have with us to moderate the case Dr. Richa Choksi who is an assistant professor in our department. So to present two cases we have two junior residents with us today Dr. Ananya Jha and Dr. Priya Patil. So should we start? Yes, Who is going to present first? I present ma'am. Hello everyone. I'm going to present a case of 62 year old Mrs. A hailing from Kundapura, homemaker by profession, belonging to lower socioeconomic status, postmenopausal since 11 years, para 5 living 5, all vagina deliveries at home without complication. She's a case of prolapse since 7 years, on pessary since 3 years. Now she's come to the hospital for pessary follow up. Her bowel bladder habits are normal, no history of bleeding, spotting PV, no complaint of discharge per vagina, no complaint of pain abdomen. She has had a married life of 45 years, not sexually active now. Medical history, she is a known case of dilated cardiomyopathy since 5 years on medications. Known case of left knee arthritis since 1 year. No history of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, cough, no history of chronic constipation. Surgical history nil significant. Coming to HOPI, patient is a case of mass per vagina since 7 years, which was gradually increasing in size. She came to us 3 years back when her symptoms became bothersome. On examination 3 years back, she was found to have grade 3 prolapse and decision for managing her conservatively with pessary was taken. She has been under regular follow-up since then and gets pessary changed every 3 months. Her last pessary was inserted in January 2021 and there was loss to follow up because of COVID related restrictions. Okay, so now she has come after six months. Yes, okay. So when uh, you said the prolapse uh, she had since seven years, but yes, when uh, did she have she the first pessary? First pessary was put three years back, ma'am. She came. Why, why, why she waited for that yeah. four years? Initially, her symptoms were not bothering her. Later, she when she came to us three years back, she had come with urinary retention. She had to do finger sprinting. Okay. So that's when she came us and on examination she had grade and, 3 prolapse. And why didn't we tell her to go for surgery? You said that she is a known case of dilated, dilated cardiomyopathy. Maybe that was the reason. Okay, let's uh, go to the another case then we can discuss both the cases, the differences and the similarities. My case is also quite similar to her case ma'am. She was a 63 year old female hailing from Tirtha Harli, homemaker, postmenopausal since the past 20 years. Para for living for with all normal vaginal deliveries with no complications during the births. All were home vaginal deliveries. She is a known case of prolapse since the past 6 years and who has come now for pessary reinsertion. The last pessary was inserted in Jan 2021. History of presenting illness. She, has, she had complaints of mass per vaginum which gradually progressed and was reducible and subsided on lying down and increased as the day passed by. She also gave history of recurrent UTI more than the prolapse. This was bothering her more. Her routine did not include any heavy weight lifting or uh, strenuous exercise. There was no complaints of stress urinary incontinence or bubble, difficulty in bubble evacuation. She did not need finger splinting during evacuation. There were no other complaints in this patient. No history of postmenopausal bleeding, no history of white discharge per vagina. She's married for the past 48 years. She's not sexually active. Yes. She, she's a known case of diabetes and hypertension since the past 12 years who's on medication. No history of cough, asthma or COPD. She has no neuromuscular uh, disorders or arthritis. Surgical history, she underwent mini laparotomy for sterilization 33 years ago. There no history of gynecological malignancies in the family. That's it. So uh, her patient, we understand that uh, because of maybe dilated cardiomyopathy, mm -hmm. uh, she had, we have not offered her surgery. But what about your patient? Why she was not offered surgery? Mom, my patient was actually offered for surgery and uh, the patient denied. She was not willing, willing for, for surgery for at surgery. that time. Okay. So we had two cases here, both of uh, them are a case of prolapse, both of them are 
with SLE and one of the patients uh, did not choose surgery, surgery herself yeah. and in the other patient the doctor said that it Medical. was very risky for her yeah. so pessary treatment was chosen for her. So as uh, we are discussing pessary, tell Ananya there are how many types of treatment for pelvic organ prolapse? Types of treatment Treatments. can be conservative or mm -hmm. surgical. Okay. Conservatively, we offer pelvic floor muscle training to the patient mm -hmm. and uh, levator and I strengthening muscles uh, mm -hmm. exercises are advised to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming to pessary, mm -hmm. that's another indication when the patient is not medically fit for surgery mm -hmm. or if the patient refuses to undergo surgery, we offer pessary. So we have also, three modalities of treatment. Yes, when these patients come to our setup, usually the prolapse is already advanced. Yeah. Okay, so usually our first, first line, line of therapy is surgery. 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 Okay, and follow up also in our setup is not very good like yeah. it is seen in Western world. So our first line of management usually is surgery. surgery. But if by chance they are young and they have come early, maybe uh, we can choose primary therapy as pelvic floor muscle training. So how do we choose a patient for a pessary? Ma'am, there are uh, patient factors and there are pelvic factors. Patient for uh, the most important prerequisite for pessary insertion would be patient should be uh, willing to follow with us. Uh, it's not like we put the pessary and the patient forgets. So every three to four months, the patient needs to come back to us for us to assess how well it is working or whether she requires a change. Maybe initially or for initially, one year or so, yes, one year or so and then later then follow later. can be yes, delayed. And uh, pelvic factors, uh, most importantly, if uterus is uh, in situ, yes. it is so better. That becomes the so most important goes. factor, yeah. uterus in situ. Yes, so for gold prolapse, basically, this is an important thing. Pessary does not work. Mm -hmm. Though in uh, very desperate cases, sometimes we have used when we wanted to wait for one month for so a certain condition. Yeah. Most of the women, when we put, it comes yeah. out. Yeah. Also, uh, pelvic floor muscle strength is important when we are choosing a patient for pessary. Yes. Uh, if there is laxity, it might uh, fail ah. or expel. Expulsion, chances expulsion of expulsion more. are very high. Yeah. So you need a good pelvic floor muscle mm -hmm. so that it can be yeah. retained yeah. inside. So all these things have to be assessed before, mm -hmm. before. putting a pessary. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, you tell the patient it will work and she mm -hmm. goes home and she will think that it was a wrong mm -hmm. decision. Then she loses faith in you. Mm -hmm. Then whatever you tell she won't. She will say that one treatment I opted, it did not work. Mm -hmm. So very important. So how many types of pessaries are there? Coming to types of pessary, there are usually three types of pessaries. Uh, for cystocele, we prefer ring with support. For uterine prolapse, we hollow ring pessaries are advised. And for stress urinary incontinence, uh, pessaries with knob-like structure to support the bladder is preferred. Yeah. So it's not that there are three kind of pessaries. If you just look at the design, okay. First, I think we should classify them based on the material. Okay. Usually, the better pessaries these days are silicon pessaries. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, what is available in our setup, we have silicon also, Plastic. but we have plastic, plastic pessary also. also. Okay, but if we, you look at the shape, there are more than 126 mm -hmm. types of pessaries. Okay, but if you want to classify, there are two kinds of pessaries. One are supportive pessaries, okay. like ring pessaries and what you said, ring with mm -hmm. diaphragm. And there are some pessaries, obliterative pessaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. they are akin to Colpoclesis, you put it and everything goes sure. up. So we have that kind of pessaries also. So not only three, there are many, many types of pessaries. Okay. Okay. Uh, coming to examination of my patient, general condition was fair, no pallor noted, limping gait noted in the patient, thyroid appears normal, no lymph node enlargement appreciated, cardiovascular system, pan-systolic murmur heard, respiratory system, bilateral normal vesicular breath sound, Per abdomen, soft, non-tender, no mass palpable, no scars seen. Coming to inspection, no mass seen per vagina, no stress urinary incontinence, cuff impulse absent, no bleeding seen. After inspection, I removed the previous pessary and then inserted speculum. Cervical os visualized, cervix healthy. Pop cue was performed after asking the patient to strain and grade 2 cystocele, which was central, was noted. Vaginal rugosities were absent. Second degree uterine descent noted. No rectocele and pterocele noted. 
ulcers of about 2 into 1 cm noted on the right and left vaginal wall which bled on touch. Right and left vaginal mm -hmm. wall you found ulcers. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. After removing the okay. previous What pencil. do you think was the cause of that? I think it can be because of the pressure Pessary. of the previous mm -hmm. pencil. Maybe a size. Yes. Yes. Coming to pervaginal examination, bilateral fornis is free, no tenderness noted. On bimanual, uterus small, retroverted, mobile, per rectal, no rectocele, levator and night tone uh, noted to be around grade 2, perineal body measured around 4 cm. Ulcer was gently palpated, it was 2 into 1 cm in size and about 0.5 cm in depth. It was quite a deep ulcer. Yes, mm -hmm. So based on POPQ, the impression was stage 2 prolapse and the patient was being managed conservatively with ring pessary mm -hmm. and now presents with a complication that is ulcer. Okay. But patient did not complain of patient that. It was incidentally no found. Bleeding. No bleeding. No active bleeding. Just no discharge. Blood touch. No discharge. So most of the times we are more concerned when the patient complains of something. But if some complication happens, we should be able to detect it before the patient says. Yes. It's so pa patient is saying that I don't have any complaint. That doesn't mean that we can ignore it. Yes. Okay, it's not an incidental yes, finding. It is a complication yes. which has to be addressed. Yes, okay. Your examination findings? Yes, ma'am. Uh, on examination, the general condition of my patient appeared fair. Gait was normal. Thyroid and breast appeared normal. There was no lymph node enlargement. Vitals were stable. On cardiovascular examination, S1, S2 was heard and respiratory, both bilateral normal vascular breath sounds were heard. Per abdomen examination, abdomen was soft, non-tender. There was abdominal obesity noted. The, peep, the postpartum sterilization scar was healthy and there was a mass palpable that uterus corresponding to 20 weeks of size. Okay. It was smooth, firm in consistency, borders were felt, mobile, but there was no fluid noted in the abdomen. On inspection, there was more mass or growth protruding out of the vagina. Cough impulse was negative. There was more stress urinary incontinence noted in this patient. The pessary was removed. There was a mild cystocele noted. Vaginal rugosity were present. Rectocil of grade 2 was noted. There was a 2 into 1 centimeter ulcer noted on the lateral vaginal wall so your on the right side yes, okay. which was superficial okay. but mine was not as deep as what Ananya mentioned. Pervaginal examination, cervix was uh, firm in consistency, there was no induration and on bimanual examination uterus was small, retroverted and mobile. The ulcer was palpated, there was no uh, depth could be it was only no, point superficial, superficially, superficially. so there was it was not very deep mm -hmm. and the borders were smooth and bilateral fornices were, were free and no tenderness noted levator ani tone in this patient was grade 2 and perineal body measured 3.5 cm per rectal examination ruled, uh, confirmed the rectocele which was grade 2 and your patient also did not present with any bleeding no ma'am bleeding was also very minimal in this patient mm -hmm. On removal of the pessary, we could Then you noticed, notice, but the, it was not patient's complaint. No, ma'am. No, Priya, one very interesting thing you told that you found a mass. Big yes, mass. Yes, ma'am. Actually, when we asked her, she uh, gave no uh, history, ma'am. Uh -huh. But then when we went through her older reports and all, uh -huh. we noted that she was a non-case of fibroid. Oh. Uh, for okay. which she was thoroughly evaluated before. Uh -huh. MRI was done uh -huh. and uh, noted that it was a sub cell fibroid. Uh -huh. 10 into 10 centimeter okay. uh, big in size. in size. So suppose if you uh, do not have this information mm. and this is the first time in 63 years old you are seeing a mass. Yes, what will your be your I would first think malignancy. Ma Which malignancy? Uh, ovarian ovarian malignancy. malignancy. Because fibroids are usually not mm. common yes, in this age. Yes. But luckily this patient has earlier reports which showed history. that she has fibroids. Okay. Yes, but it was an asymptomatic, asymptomatic fibroid. Fibroid. fibroid since mm -hmm. many years. In this case, we have a subserosal fibroid that might be the cause of prolapse. Yes, yes a yes, big fibroid, which obesity is there. On top of that, that one 20 week size mm -hmm. fibroid mm -hmm. is there, which might be present. Yeah. Her BMI so was actually 37. she uh, 37, 31. 31. 31. 7. So um, actually, she was a very good candidate, and she was a perfect candidate who should have undergone surgery. 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 Yeah. Yeah. 
but you cannot go against wishes of the patient. If patient says that I don't want surgery, you cannot just catch hold of her and operate okay. on her. You answered how do you choose a patient for pessary. Yes, now, ma'am. once you've chosen the patient, how do you decide the correct size of pessary? Ma'am, we do a pervaginal examination to estimate the size of the pessary. It is usually a trial and error method. Mm. Uh, two fingers are inserted into the vaginal cavity. Mm. The middle finger reaches the posterior fornix and the index finger mm. reaches the posterior part of the symphysis pubis. Okay. And this is noted as the diameter of the pessary. Mm. And uh, we usually have to choose a size larger rather than a size smaller to in, uh, for insertion. But in our setup, we are getting just three different sizes size, of pessary. Yes, so we have to use... Then whatever is available yes. okay then uh, now suppose you have put the pessary yes, how do you see that it is a perfect fit we have to see if the pessary is a perfect fit or not once after inserting the pessary you sweep your fingers through the perimeter yes. to check for any pressure point it shouldn't be too tight mm-hmm. then after that the so patient you should be able to sweep, sweep put one finger, finger around the pessary, pessary. Okay. Yes, if it is not that is definitely an indication that this patient will come back with ulcerations yes, and then after that, the patient is encouraged to walk mm. around for an hour. We mm. observe her. And once she voids urine, mm. that's when we know that the pessary is fit in and it will not be expired. So, so we have to, it is it is what you are seeing. It is mm. objective thing. Yeah. But you have to ask patient, patient also. Patient, patient should not feel uncomfortable or pain. Sometimes if the pessary mm. is big, she feels uncomfortable. Yeah. So you cannot say this is I both. I to ask the patient uh, mm. how when she passed during how was it what was it painful mm. or was the how was the stream it should not be too tight to yes. press okay. in. So patient symptoms also are important like patient we have to ask mm-hmm. her things whether she is comfortable or not she is able to void properly then we have to see for us oh. also objectively whether it is okay. So it is a combination of mm-hmm. both. Okay. Then. Then you send her for follow up. How frequently you call her for follow up? So a patient with pessary in situ is called every three months for a regular checkup and for changing the pessary. In that, while removing the pessary, we also see if any ulceration see, erosions are there. So, okay. So um, see what I understand that there is no protocol, there is no guideline, there is no recommendation that what is an ideal pessary follow up. Okay, but usually, as you said, it depends from setup to setup, but usually it is three to six months, you have to call the patient. Okay, so many people, what do they do? They call the patient three months and change the pessary every three months. What we have started adopting in our practice now, that in first one year, we call the patient every three months, but we every three months, we don't change the pessary. We just look for any complication, any pressure points, the fit of the pessary, the comfort of the patient. If everything sounds good, we just send the patient and change the pessary only after six months. Okay. Okay. I think it is so difficult. Like when a patient comes to our kind of hospital, which is a teaching hospital. And here she comes like for one thing also half day or sometimes like many hours full day is wasted. Because patient might be traveling from 300 kilometers to 500 kilometers to reach there. I feel it is very, very difficult for patient to spend one day every three months. Mm. And here most of our women who are having prolapse are actually not independent. They are old ajis, not independent. Mm. They come with either son or husband and they have to leave their work for one day. So it is not very comfortable um, situation. So actually I feel sometimes, Richard, that it won't it be a very good idea that we have some kind of clinics, like one clinic in Chimoga, one mm-hmm. clinic in Gundapur, mm-hmm. these periphery, where they don't come to us every time. They just go there for a pessary yes, checkup yes, or uh, pessary removal. Mm-hmm. They go there half an hour, their work is done, yes, one yes. expert person is sitting there. So we can uh, develop these kind of actually pessary yes, clinics. Yes. <laughs> pessary. So tell something about the complications. What are the complications when we are saying that we want to look for complications? What complication do you think the patient can have with a pessary? Ma'am, a patient can come with excessive vaginal discharge, okay. pain, mm-hmm. can come with bleeding, mm-hmm. ulcers like we saw in our patient, erosions. Mm-hmm. So the complication of pessaries is graded mm-hmm. by this classification called clabbing dindo classification. Okay. It has five grades. Mm-hmm. Grade one is any deviation from standard care, okay. which will be in ulcers, erosions, vaginal discharge or pain. 
grade two is the one that requires some pharmacological intervention mm -hmm. again in erosion ulceration or bleeding deeper uh, this, yeah, that you need to give some local estrogen yes. cream grade three is one that requires surgery yeah. grade three is the one that requires surgical or some radiological intervention. Mm -hmm. This will be in case of vesicovaginal fistula or rectovaginal fistula mm -hmm. if the yes, patient same. develops. Mm -hmm. Grade 4 is when some organ dysfunction also develops because of small bowel incarceration or vaginal cancer. Mm -hmm. Grade Operate 5 process. Yes, mm -hmm. Grade 5 is the complication that leads to death of patient okay, in extreme even you cases. said even vaginal cancers can happen. How yeah. do, are you sure that vaginal cancers, if they see, they do happen? If What is the pathophysiology? Yes, vaginal cancers can happen because of pessary. Yes, yes. Also, long term, can, answer, long if term? the patient loses to follow up. Yeah. So and if it is answer. long term neglected, like see you know Pleasure. that if there is a tooth, if it is um, a tooth edge or something which is irritating the buccal yeah. mucosa constant. for long time, constant irritation, friction, friction is there. And it is not looked after properly, then it can lead to a buccal mucosa cancer. cancer yes. Exactly the same way, epithelial lining of vagina can get converted into malignant mm -hmm. tissue mm -hmm. if it is there, if it is irritating. So mm -hmm. that's one of the complications of neglected pessary. We always say that we have to tell all these complications. See, we have to educate the patient that these are the benefits. You are not undergoing surgery. These are the pros of so not undergoing cons. and cons mm -hmm. also and this complications like from mild like constipation minimal discharge so it can be to urosepsis and death oh, so we have to take extra, so care, extra care for this yeah. yeah but one thing i would say that okay you have to tell that these are but you have to tell the patient that these are very rare, rare. if yeah. you tell the urosepsis and death yeah. patient yeah. will say no i don't want a yes, pessary she will not take any yes. treatment you have to uh, mildly tell that don't neglect and yes. it can lead to say uh, usually they do mm -hmm. not happen yes. but in neglected cases they are the possibility mm -hmm. so it can happen but usually the common ones are what you have told in the beginning vaginal discharge is very common the smile bleeding mm -hmm. is very common erosions and ulceration these are the common things mm -hmm. that do happen yes. okay i have seen actually one patient sometimes they are like they go into the migrate pessaries migrate into yes. the peritoneal cavity also if it is neglected mm -hmm. so i have seen a case it was a case of neglected pessary and pessary actually has formed a there was an ulceration and then tissue healing mm -hmm. happened and then there was a thick band of uh, fibrous, fibrous fibrous band fibrous. which was actually engulfing the entire section mm -hmm. of the pessary so we did not know what is behind mm -hmm. that we had to cut that segment pull out the pessary luckily one ball loop did not come with yeah. that but it can happen yes, yes. okay it happens. Uh, so now uh, you followed you examined the patient and you saw ulcers in both the cases now would you like to reinsert the pessary no ma'am uh, we will let the ulcer heal for uh, reinserting the pessary otherwise it will cause more harm than okay so if at all, if you want to reinsert the pessary, suppose a patient is there who has just come for a pessary change and everything is fine, no complication. So how will you insert the pessary? Uh, first, the pessary is uh, dipped into Savlon solution for uh, disinfection purposes. And then after that, a lubricant jelly is applied around the pessary. The pessary is uh, pinched at the center so that it becomes oval in shape. And then it is inserted into the vagina in first the uh, posterior fornix has the pessary should reach the posterior fornix and the anterior edge of the pessary is inserted into the anterior fornix just behind the symphysis just under the symphysis pubis yes. and then as ananya said that you have to uh, palpate for the edges yeah. so that sweep, there's no sweep around the perimeter. perimeter perimeter so that there are no pressure points yes. noted in this patient so now this patient has ulcers. We, we have decided that both the patient, we are not going to give pessary. Mm -hmm. So what will be the advice for your patient? My patient, uh, I would still try and uh, talk to her and advise her that surgery is a better option yes. than for her to wait and uh, come back for pessary reinsertion. But if actually she, for her surgery should be the treatment done, yes, because there is no comorbidity at 63 years of age. She is young. She is a strong woman right mm -hmm. now. She has just diabetes and, and hypertension. hypertension. If we wait for a few more years, 
maybe her condition she might develop some cardiac problem which will be difficult then that time it will be more difficult to operate mm-hmm. and she has a reason like dr richa said that maybe you have to convince her you have to tell maybe that fibroid only is the case of cause of her uh, yes, prolapse. prolapse and it hasn't regressed also even after the yes. postmenopausal uh, period uh, how many years postmenopausal 20 20 years postmenopausal and still it it's a big fight yes i think she should be convinced mm. to uh, undergo change surgery. to undergo surgery, surgery rather than changing you have to little scare her let's mm. see your ulcer is there now we cannot put so we have to operate yes, okay yes. for your patient ma'am since my patient had a deep ulcer of mm-hmm. about 0.5 cm mm-hmm. we advised her local estrogen cream which will help with the vaginal mucosal healing mm-hmm. and have called her after a couple of months for mm-hmm. a checkup again so usually how much time it takes for the ulcers to heal so the vaginal mucosa being so vascular it has a very good healing potential so it can heal in a week's time in or 10 days time, yes so it can heal actually superficial ulcers can heal as quickly <laughs> as in 3 days yes okay. okay but the thing is that uh, maybe it's okay if the patient is nearby you can call her next mm-hmm. week but this patient has deep ulcer yes, and you call her and she has travel 500 mm-hmm. kilometers and again you call her and mm-hmm. then the ulcer has not healed mm-hmm. she will get really yes, frustrated mm-hmm. okay and maybe for dilated cardiomyopathy any idea how much is her ejection fraction she, so the ejection fraction was around 30% percent, ma'am which is very patient. bad yes, okay mm-hmm. So thirty percent ejection fraction. It is very risky to operate. So if pessary works for her, it is good for her. Actually, and actually, it's working her for her. The patient had actually bothered some symptoms, so she Now was put on pessary. Too. Now, when we advised her to be without pessary for uh, two ready. months, she was not ready. <laughs> okay, she wanted the pessary. Yes. pessary yeah. Yeah. She said yeah. she will not be able to tolerate the symptoms even for two days. Yes. Yes. It was grade three when she yes, presented. Yes, and now, now it is grade two. Examination grade two. So, so it it two. makes lot of difference when it is outside and it goes yes, inside. Yes, so yes. that actually uh, improved her quality of life drastically. Yes. Improved. Yes. Yeah. So Priya, you said that you want to operate on her. Yes, ma'am. Now tell me what surgery for anemia patient is simple. She'll put pessary yes, and keep on calling her yes. for follow up visits. In your patient, we are saying that we should. Uh, tell her to undergo surgery now. What surgery you want to do for her? Um, Ma'am, considering that there is a mass ten into ten centimeter, but we can still attempt for vaginal hysterectomy. Mm-hmm. And if fails, she might be uh, she might require that opening of abdomen and go for total abdominal hysterectomy yes. with bilateral oophorectomy. Yes. And you have to be very sure that it is a fibroid. Like when you are doing it, it is yes, fibroid. So we higher imaging should be done. MRI has already oh, been done, ma'am. We okay. already sent. We have actually previously sent uh, the tumor markers also, which okay. were normal in this patient. And MRI has confirmed that it confirmed is a subcutaneous fibroid. Yes, ma'am. So you can go for vaginal hysterectomy. If and not, I'm, not possible if any problem is there or if expertise is not there in your center or the person who is doing to take out that uterus from below. It's not wrong to do an abdominal hysterectomy also, but it has to be combined with. repairs also yes, anything else richa you want to ask uh, i think we forgot to discuss the indications of pessary mm-hmm. mm-hmm. ma'am indications of pessary uh, majorly are if it is a second degree prolapse in a patient pessary can be inserted and the uh, newer definition of ics says that mm-hmm. you should consider prolapse only when it is outside okay mm-hmm. just deviation from normal Mm-hmm. is not prolapse okay? okay so usually many a time second degree prolapse is our finding okay yes okay. if the patient says that she feels anything mm-hmm. maybe that patient will be a better candidate for pelvic floor muscle training okay, okay. pessary is used in third and fourth degree prolapse when it okay. is out and when you reposit it back okay, okay. Uh, for healing of decubitus ulcers mm-hmm. and uh, for bind time yes ma'am. so in western world one of the major indication is if the lady is young she doesn't want to undergo surgery she mm-hmm. wants to retain her uterus mm-hmm. they give her pessary but in our setup if we give pessary she has to come here to us every 3 months. months suppose the lady is 40 years mm-hmm. and she lives till 80 years mm-hmm. so for 40 years every 3 mm-hmm. months that yeah. means Fourteen to four years. One hundred and sixty times she has to come, and maybe later on she develops some problems, complications. So it is a lot of frustration. Okay, so and uh, she will definitely develop some complication if she's lost to follow up. 
So usually we do not give pessary as the first line uh, uh, indication. It is not the first mm -hmm. line indication to give pessary. Mm -hmm. Or if the patient is an no, no. And no, You cannot. If the doctor decides that doing surgery is much more, more risky for the patient than, than following her up. Okay. So I think we discussed many important things in pessary today. And these were two important cases. And... Um, fortunately or unfortunately fortunate for our discussion mm -hmm. point of view both patients came within two days of difference and both had something similar yes. in them both developed complication I think it was very interesting to discuss this case the today complications and complications and, and uh, I think with, whenever we are uh, choosing a patient for pessary yes. we should know what are the indications of pessary how to put the pessary what mm -hmm. is the correct size of the pessary yes. what are the possible complications and follow -up. yes so all these things should be kept in mind. Patient before. counseling also. I think it is also very important that we counsel the patients. So I think Richard, we discussed all these things today. Anything else from your side? Okay, so I think we are done with this case discussion and very soon we'll come with some more interesting cases. So till then, thank you. Thank you. If you like our video, please subscribe to our channel. And do share. share.